Prime Minister Justin Trudeau could barely contain himself before launching into a tirade against critics of his bloated budget. Like a petulant child, he threw a tantrum at the first sign of dissent. He let loose a barrage of attacks portraying all opponents as greedy multi-millionaires out to crush average Canadians. His comments attracted the attention of Pierre Polyev, who proceeded to debate Trudeau on the costly budget in the House of Commons, leading to Trudeau repeating the same ad hominem about Polyev supporting the wealthy over the middle class. But when even your former finance minister and the tech industry is warning you over the capital gains tax hike will hurt investment and growth in the economy, then something is seriously wrong with your policies. Canada needs steady leadership and pro-growth policies, not defensive diatribes divorced from reality. Trudeau revealed the empty rhetoric behind his budget. His attacks exposed the weakness of his position, and his tantrums signaled that Canadians deserve better. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we jump into today's video, take a second to sign up for our exclusive uncensored newsletter. The mainstream media won't report Trudeau's scandals and corruption, but our newsletter delivers the raw truth to your inbox daily. We'll leave you the link in the description box. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau could not wait a day or more before having to prematurely whine and cry about all the justified and rightful criticisms he was getting in response to his abysmal and costly budget that he tabled alongside his equally corrupt Deputy Prime Minister Christy Freeland. Trudeau managed to do the whole dance by speaking during the weekly meeting of the Federal Liberal Caucus in Ottawa. A lot of unfounded confidence was running through his veins as he talked about all the sacrifices and the hard work that the Liberals are definitely doing just to make Canada a fairer place for every generation, and especially young Canadians that are looking to start their adult life properly and with the same leg up their parent and grandparents had when they were starting out as well. Trudeau blabbered a lot about all the places he visited and all the speeches he made about all the policies that he will be too incompetent to properly implement. Policies that will come about and be paid for after Trudeau and the Liberals tax the ever-living hell out of wealthy and successful Canadians. And then Trudeau proceeded to end his lousy speech with a general call-out to all conservative politicians that are somehow standing with the wealthy Canadians against the middle class. Right now, the economy doesn't seem fair. To young adults. And that's a challenge for us both here in Canada and right around the world. You see... Gen Z and Millennials are the engine of our economy. Everything that is created, built, served and sold in this country is increasingly being created, built, served and sold by Millennials and Gen Z. They're the young parents, the students doing cutting edge research, the young entrepreneurs with startup ideas. Their success is Canada's success. In the future, sure, but also right now. But the economy isn't rewarding them the way it used to reward their parents and grandparents. That's not right. That's not fair. We believe government should step up and take action. So we put together a plan. And for the last few weeks, I've been getting out there and talking with Canadians about it. I know all of you have too. Talking about our plan for fairness for every generation. I went to Vancouver, where I talked with young people about how we're going to be making rent count towards paying a mortgage. I went to the GTA, where I talked to the kids from Generation Chosen about their mental health and about everything we're going to do to support them. I was in Calgary, where I talked with the business community about how we're keeping Canada competitive during the global energy transition. And all through it, I made lots of announcements with Sean Fraser, including in Halifax, about uh, how we're launching the most ambitious and comprehensive housing plan this country has ever seen. <laughs> We will build more homes faster than we've seen in generations. This plan, this budget, is about making sure we build an economy that is fair for everyone. We don't think it's fair that a teacher or electrician pays taxes on 100% of their income, 
while a multimillionaire pays taxes only on 50% of the passive income they make on capital gains. So we're going to make them pay a little more. I want to be crystal clear, though. This tax will not apply to anyone. And so 99.87% of Canadians will not pay a cent more tax. Those who will, those who will will be those who've benefited from an economy that seems tipped towards them and away from everyone else particularly young people. So we're asking them to pay their fair share so that younger generations can have the same opportunities that Xers, Boomers, and other generations had when they were starting out in their lives. The people that are driving our economy, the Millennials and Gen Z who make up the majority of our workforce already, deserve the same advantages. This is the challenge we need to meet, and our plan will meet this moment. I want for a moment for you all to think back to that moment in time where you, each of you, put up your hand to represent your fellow Canadians here in Parliament. You did it to meet big challenges. You did it to make Canada a place where everyone has the same opportunity to get ahead, a real and fair chance to succeed. There are politicians out there who just want to rile people up and tear things down, who don't think it's the government's job to step up to make sure the economy is fair for everyone. Conservatives have already said they're voting against this budget. They're voting against fairness. They will be voting against asking the ultra-rich to pay their share. Canadians need responsible leadership right now. Leaders who come to them with solutions, ready to invest in Canadians' ideas and Canadians' futures. This budget lays out a plan to make sure Canadians can build homes, build companies, build solutions, and make the best country in the world even better. So let's get to it together. Let's build a country that is stronger, more prosperous, and fair for every generation. Merci, mes amis. Let's get out there. This is Trudeau's way of distilling his opposition's position into a vague cloud of negativity, just because they rightfully denounce his out-of-touch and costly federal budget. Rather than have a reasoned discussion on the budget, Trudeau resorts to distorting the Conservatives' position. He creates a false dichotomy between helping average Canadians and supporting the wealthy. In reality, the Conservatives believe in empowering all hard-working taxpayers, not dividing them into warring classes. It didn't take long for Trudeau's comments to spark a heated debate in the House Commons between him and the Conservative leader, Pierre Polyev, who has been adamant in opposing the 2024 federal budget to the point of scheduling a press conference right after the budget meeting to publicly express his disdain for the liberal agenda that will overspend taxpayers' money on vanity, woke projects, and failed programs. Polyev started the back and forth with Trudeau by highlighting how the liberal budget will not be paid for by the ultra-wealthy like Trudeau and Freeland would have you believe. The federal budget, with all of its wasteful spend, will be paid for by the average middle-class Canadian that is already taxed to hell and back with the carbon tax, and now his life will suffer less affordability because Trudeau thinks his corrupt policies will make him hip with the youth and get him back the young vote he lost to the Conservatives. The Prime Minister then had to embarrass himself, retorting back by asserting that any form of opposition to his tax hikes will ultimately mean that the Conservatives have put the interests of the rich over those of ordinary Canadian citizens. Very cool to see Canada's Prime Minister do a little propaganda live and in front of our very eyes. But the humiliation did not stop here. With every point Polyev brought out against Trudeau's fiscally irresponsible policies, Trudeau then proceeded to ignore the point entirely and focus on how Conservatives are supporting the ultra-rich. Funny, considering that between Trudeau and Polyev, Trudeau is the one that enjoys luxurious Caribbean vacations on the dime of his ultra-wealthy friends. I'm definitely having trouble figuring out which one of these two is truly serving the 1% of Canada and trampling all over the lower classes. Who pays? That's right. 
Who pays for this latest $50 billion orgy of spending by this costly Prime Minister? We know it won't pay. It won't be those with trust funds that protect their millions of inheritance like the Prime Minister, nor the billionaires that invite him to their private Carib Caribbean islands. They'll, they'll hide their money. You know who will pay? You will pay. You, the welder or waitress who can't pay your mortgage because he's inflated the mortgage rates. You will pay because he carbon taxed your food and now you can't feed your kids. Why should you pay for him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My comment still, uh, still applies. Uh, the Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it is interesting to see the lengths to which the Leader of the Opposition will go to avoid saying that he is choosing to stand with the ultra-wealthy, against the middle class, against young Canadians. Uh, it, when we first got elected and raised taxes on the wealthiest 1% to lower them for the middle class, the Conservative Party and that Leader voted against it. We are asking uh, for the wealthiest in this country, the wealthiest 0.1%, to pay more in taxes so we can support the middle class, so we can restore the dream, particularly for young people, of home ownership, of a brighter future that the world is taking away from people all over the world. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. P Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister likes to blame the world for the problems <laughs> that he caused. He doubled the debt, doubled the rent, doubled mortgage payments, doubled the needed down payment, and now he's doubling down on the same costly mistakes that have made life unaffordable for Canadians. When will this Prime Minister realize that he's not worth the cost and that repeating the same thing nine times and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity? Prime Minister. Speaker, what the Leader of the Opposition is saying is that he stands with the ultra-wealthy 0.1% in this country and everyone else is on their own, because that's what he would do as he slashes programs, as he slashes investments, as he doesn't build the homes necessary, as he doesn't have a plan to fight climate change and create good jobs, as he has stood against affordability measures, as he stands against seniors getting dental care, Mr. Speaker. He is choosing to stand with the ultra-wealthy while we are investing in Canadians and building a stronger future that is fair for everyone. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, he is the ultra-wealthy. He hid his family fortune in a tax-sheltered trust fund so he wouldn't have to pay the same tax as everyone else. He vacations with the ultra-wealthy on their private islands in tax-preferred locations where they can hide their money and avoid paying their fair share here in Canada. And now he's paying off the, the ultra-wealthy by spending $54 billion on debt interest more than on health care. Why give more money to the ultra-wealthy bankers and bondholders instead of the nurses and doctors? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, this is a budget that invests in fairness for every generation by asking the ultra-wealthy to pay a little more. And, Mr. Speaker, the Conservative Party is choosing to stand with the status quo, stand with the ultra-wealthy, instead of saying, yes, we need to invest in young people, we need to build more houses, we need to support seniors with dental care, we need to create more spaces in childcare, we need to deliver hundreds of dollars a month tax free in a disability benefit. These are the things we will be doing. Those are the things that they stand against. Trudeau's rhetoric is an attempt to paint the Conservatives as puppets of the elite, but is the Prime Minister who is out of touch with the needs of everyday Canadians. His budget does nothing to address skyrocketing inflation, unaffordable housing, rising interest rates, and record household debt. Canadians deserve substantive ideas, not partisan attacks. Yet Trudeau cannot seem to have a civil policy debate and instead resorts to mudslinging. 
His comments about conservatives standing against fairness are disingenuous when the liberal budget contains no measures to actually make the economy more equitable. And what fairness is it exactly when he is promising to tax any successful business more, even small businesses are not immune to his sleazy tactics. His fiscal policies are going to do absolutely nothing beneficial in the long run and will only negatively affect the already broken economy and will send signals to the world that Canada will not welcome competitiveness in the free market. Don't believe this? Well, many the words of Canada's former finance minister will add to the worth of this notion. Bill Morneau, who served as Canada's finance minister from 2015 to 2020, has voiced concerns that the tax hike will hurt economic growth and investment. Criticizing current finance minister Chrystia Freeland's announcement of an increase in the capital gains inclusion rate from 50% to 75%. This effectively raises the tax rate on capital gains from 27% to 45% for amounts over $250,000. Warno stated this is a policy he specifically resisted implementing while he was finance minister. His objection stems from worries about damaging Canada's growth prospects. As Morneau explained, This was very clearly something that while I was there, we resisted. We resisted it for a very specific reason. Concerned about the growth of the country. The former finance minister argues that hiking the capital gains tax will discourage business investment at a time when Canada needs it most. With high inflation, rising interest rates, and economic uncertainty, Penalizing investors makes little sense. The Trudeau government claims Canada had even higher capital gains tax rates from 1990 to 1999. However, the global investment environment has changed dramatically since then. We now face fierce competition from jurisdictions like the United States where rates are much lower. Morneau joins provincial finance ministers and business groups in criticizing the capital gains tax increase. All note that punishing investment and success will undermine Canada's competitiveness and productivity. Even the tech sector, which Trudeau had glazed incessantly with his AI technology investment fund, is not particularly happy with federal budget and the capital gains tax hike. Tech leaders warn the tax hikes will drive investment and talent out of the country, undermining growth and competitiveness at a critical time. Tech industry groups like the Council of Canadian Innovators have been quick to sound the alarm about the consequences. As President Benjamin Burgeon stated, the best way to boost government revenue is to encourage economic expansion, not stifle it through excessive taxation. Many entrepreneurs and venture capitalists share this concern and have criticized the capital gains tax increase. They argue it will discourage investment in startups and hurt Canada's ability to attract talent. We have already seen signs of the damage being done. Independent MP Kevin Vong shared a message from a tech founder already planning a move to the U.S., saying Canada no longer celebrates innovation and talent. No doubt many other startups and investors are considering similar moves. With high inflation already eroding incomes, Canadians need affordability, not government measures that restrict growth and opportunity. We can build a prosperous economy that works for everyone, not just the privileged few. But excessive taxation of capital gains takes us in the wrong direction. Well, that's all for now. What is your opinion on the capital gains tax hike? Do you believe this will further hurt competition in Canada's economy? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.